So sometimes the old wife says, why don't you do something useful with all that junk you have in the basement? Well, today we're going to do something useful. I'm going to fix, at least try, to fix my toaster. We'll see how it goes. Let's have a quick look inside, because when you plug it in, you push down it no longer comes up. It's supposed to stay down when it's plugged in. Plug her in here. And nothing. Unplug it. At least there's no capacitors or anything. It's not really electronics, but anyway. Still something electrical. I bet this comes off like that. Hmm, it's even a circuit board in there, so maybe there are some electronics. So, let's see what's going on here. There's a little magnet -y thingy down there. There's a little magnet down there. Goes down, presses those, engages. This switch, dual pull switch. And it's supposed to engage this magnet over here, which holds it down. It doesn't seem to be too badly broken. Maybe I just didn't put it together correctly. Oh. There's one problem. A little circus board. Anyway, so there's a problem there. That was probably cut. Let's see if I got continuity on these wires here. Okay, let's see if we can zoom in on that. So, as you can see, it's a little damage there. So, I'll take that off. Let's see if I got continuity. I might have to. We fix that wire up there. Okay, okay. Okay, put that over there. Put that there. I think I can. Lights and everything all lit up. You need to take the circuit board out and see what's inside, but I don't think I can do that directly. Doesn't appear to be any screws. Ooh. Okay, there we go. According to theory, those two should be have continuity across the board. Ah, yeah, see right there. No, nope, the wires look okay. I might just put some more shrink wrap over that. Okay, uh, this is when having breadboard supplies comes in handy. That in there. Stick that in there. Go meter. Nope. No continuity. Is disconnected somewhere. So the problem is this.
Cool. It's five volts. Turn the magnet off. Down it goes. Turn the magnet on. Nice little electro magnet. <laughs> Almost worth scrapping it just for that. Okay, dokie. Give it one more test. <laughs> Gotta love it. Full dim bulb glow. Drawing like over 300 watts. Ugh. No wonder they call it the most dangerous appliance. All right, that's working. Always test it before you put it away. One more test here. I'm not going to touch that piece of metal. Hey, it's working. LED, LED, and off. Yay. Since I still have a few minutes, let's have a quick look at the history of the toaster. As this artist's rendering illustrates, the toaster probably dates back to Neolithic time. Matter of fact, it predates the invention of bread which we attribute to the Egyptians, though it was probably used in India well before that. Our word toaster originates from the Latin, torer, which means to char or sear. Then it went into the old French, toaster, and eventually into Middle English as toast, or as we say today, toast. Unfortunately, the design of the toaster basically stagnated for the next few dozen millennia. As you can see, this Roman toaster from about the first century BCE would have been familiar to Tom Brown when he was fagging for Harry Flashman in the mid-19th century. And likewise, Tom Brown's toaster would have been easily recognized by Black Atticus and Baldricus. We have to wait a few more years until there was any change in the basic toaster technology. Under Queen Victoria, who had a real passion for toast, especially a bone marrow and something called clotted butter, we saw almost 20,000 patents issued within a 30-year period. In the waning years of Queen Victoria's reign, we saw the first use of electricity for mass street lighting. It wasn't long after this, in 1893, that an ingenious Scottish engineer, Alan McMasters, devised a way to make toast with electricity, and thus the electric toaster was born. McMasters quickly sold his invention to the Crompton Manufacturing Concern, and they came up with the Eclipse, which failed miserably, as fewer than 0.01% of the English households had electricity, and the damn things would just catch fire. The mass market toaster had to wait a few more years. It was across the pond in that bastion of capitalism, the United States of America, where the toaster finally came into being. An inventor in 1905 named Albert Marsh invented something called nichrome, which was basically a wire that could stand the heat without burning itself up. Very soon after the invention of that particular wire, George Schindler in 1905 patented the first toaster made with such a wire. Now, at about this time, the current war had come to an end, and both parties were trying to find ways to make even more money out of electricity. So it didn't take long for GE to come up with its own toaster patent in 1909, which skirted around the Marsh patents. The irony here being that Marsh was trying to skirt around the Edison 
and GE Electric uh, filament patents. So in the end, GE came out with its first model, the D12, the first commercially successful toaster. This year also saw the rise of mass marketing, and we saw some of the first toaster advertisements. At the time, the toaster was rather an expensive item, two to three days wages for your average worker. The next innovation in toaster design came about in about 1914, when a patent was granted to Hazel and Lloyd Cotman for a toaster that flipped the toast automatically. Unfortunately for the Cottons, the, this little thing called the First World War got in the way, and nothing really became of it until the end of the war when Lloyd licenses patents for the toaster and other items to the Westinghouse Corporation. Now Lloyd fully admitted that he was a very poor salesman, where Westinghouse had a huge sale force that was very experienced. It was a match made in heaven. Very soon after this, Westinghouse recruited an army of sales girls to go out and demonstrate toast and electricity to housewives. Post-war years saw a boom in toaster sales. It was also time for great technological innovations, with well over 10,000 patents being issued in the first two decades of the new century. We saw the rotisserie toaster, the pop-up toaster, and even the automatic toaster. With the arrival of sliced bread just before the 1930s, suddenly toasters all became standardized, and the toaster we know and love today came into being. There was even a smart toaster marketed. Someday soon, someone's going to patent an artificial intelligence for a toaster. No!